In this video, I'm gonna be going through the miracle of chicken feathers and why they are so amazing. And stay tuned till the end because I'll go through the anatomy of a chicken feather and talk about feathers overall and the molting process that all chickens go through. And lastly, I'll go through some really cool uses of chicken feathers and other feathers that you actually did not know about. So without further ado, let's get into it. All birds are covered to a greater or lesser extent with feathers. We really don't think about the amazing ability of chicken feathers and their use. The very first birds, Archaeopteryx, were huge, terrifying beasts. They are one of the first known appearances of the feather enabling this dinosaur to fly. Several other dinosaurs also had rudimentary feathering. We will take a closer look at this marvel of engineering and see just how amazing it truly is. The next time you find a loose feather, spend some time looking at it closely. It really is a thing of practical beauty. Despite having feathers, not all birds can fly. Birds can be divided roughly into flightless, like the emu and the kiwi limited flight, which is chickens, and full flight, songbirds, and hawks. The first part we're going to dive into is how do hens make chicken feathers? Well, feathers are made almost entirely of keratin, a type of protein. Beaks and claws are also made of keratin. Keratin contains several amino acids in its makeup, cysteine, lysine, proline, and methionine, to name a few. The uses of feathers to the birds are many, some not as obvious as others. They are solid yet lightweight. About 10% of the total weight of the bird is feathers. The first use is flight. One of the main purposes of the feather is flight. The aerodynamics of the feather allow the bird to fly and maneuver in the air. While chickens cannot fly far, they can use their wings to escape predators or fly to hidden roosts and as a scare tactic if attacked. A second use is insulation. They help to keep the bird warm in winter and cool in summer. The fluffier the feathering, the more cold tolerant the chicken usually is. For example, the buff Orpington is extremely well insulated due to the density of her feathers. On the other hand, tight feathered birds do not fare as well in the cold weather. The third use is waterproofing. Feathers can shed off an amazing amount of water. Obviously, ducks reign supreme at this. The fourth use is protection. They can help protect the skin against all manner of weather and insects. Feathers also make it difficult for predators to grab hold and kill their prey. So in a sense, they can also protect chickens from attacks. The fifth use is camouflage. Many birds use their feather coloration to blend in with their surroundings. You may not realize it, but a snazzy black and white Dominique rooster is actually quite difficult for a hawk to see. Number six is courtship. Not so much in chickens, but in many avian species, the color and use of plumage in courtship displays will determine who gets the mate. If you've ever seen a rooster do his dance for the ladies, you'll notice he throws out one of his wings and dances around her. He's trying to show her he's in charge and also trying to impress her with his plumage. And the last use is actually a sound vibration and air current vibrations. Structures called orps corpuscles at the base of the feather are thought to detect changes in the air current and sound vibration. Naturally, both of these talents are very useful to a prey species like chickens. Now let's talk about the anatomy of the chicken feather. The feather is a simple structure to look at. The way it is put together, however, it is far from random or simple. There are a few different types of feathers, and here's a brief rundown of each. The first type of feather, contours. As the name suggests, this is what gives the bird its shape and main color. The second types of feathers, flight feathers. They are actually specialized contour feathers. They're subdivided into primary and secondary flight feathers on the wings. Together, they are known as the remiges. The tail flight feathers are known as rectrices. The next type is the down feathers. These feathers are found at the base of the contour feathers and cover the bird as insulation. These are the same feathers you can find in a down jacket. The next type of feathers is semi-plume. These are a cross between the contour and down feathers. They add extra insulation in addition to the down feathers. The next type of feather is the filoplume. These are tiny wisp-like feathers that grow around the base of the contour and semi-plume feathers. These feathers, unlike other feathers, are attached to nerve endings. It is thought that they provide the bird with information about the condition of their feathers. And the last type of feathers, bristles. You will notice these around the eye and head. It's believed they play a sensory role. Now let's talk about the map of the chicken feather. The feather consists of a single stem known as the rachis. The portion of the rachis in and just above the skin is known as the calamus or quill. Extending outwards from the rachis is the feather vein. The vein consists of interlocked barbs. The barbs are further divided into barbules and eventually hamuli or hooklets. The hooklets are cleverly designed to hold the individual barbs together to form a continuous plane. When a bird preens, they rearrange their feathers into a smooth surface ready for flight or display. Now let's get into feathers and molting. 
But before I get into that, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also subscribe to our website, thehappychickengroup.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. So now that you know that 90% of a feather is protein, you can better understand why egg production decreases or stops during molting. The molt is an incredible drain on the bird's resources. Your chicken not only has to produce new feathers, but has to produce them fairly quickly. Adult molting season usually starts around the fall, but can be much later. Chicks will have three mini molts before getting their big girl feathers at around 12 to 14 weeks. The bird needs those feathers to stay warm. The bird would need them to evade predators in a wild environment, either by flying or camouflage. Feeding your flock high quality, high protein feed during the molt is essential for their well being. Calcium should also be freely available. Now let's get into man's use of chicken feathers and how other feathers are used in our day to day lives. Well, humankind has always had a fascination with feathers. In the early part of the last century, we hunted some birds to near extinction just for feathers. Feathers are still used in some religious ceremonies, herbal remedies, and in decoration of clothing and homes. Here are a few uses that you actually may not have known about. Fishing lures. Fishermen love real feather lures, especially fly fishermen. Also, arrow fletches still used by some archers. The tail of the arrow is made from feathers. The third use is feather meal, which can be used as a fertilizer. The fourth use textile fibers. This is a fairly recent development of integrating feathers into the material. The fifth use is in the building industry. They are experimenting with fiberboard and flooring using ground up feathers in the mix. The next one is insulation. When I say insulation, I'm talking about down comforters, jackets, and pillows. And the last one, some components of a feather are also used in diapers, plastics, and paper. So all in all, birds are super unique. And of course, the feathers make them so too. The feather has given them dominion over the skies. We always notice things like the coloring of the feather, but next time you see a feather on the floor, pick it up and truly appreciate its beauty. The outward beauty of it, feathers is varied and can range from stunningly beautiful to drab. The most stunning plumage usually belongs to the male of the species. Remember, when your hens molt, it takes a lot of their protein, so don't be too upset if they stop laying for a few weeks. If you like this video, be sure to check out this one over here. That's going to do it for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening. If you find our content interesting, if you learn something new, like the video and and subscribe to the YouTube channel. With that, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.